Hi, my name is Ryan Navarro, and I'm an Applications Engineer with Hawkridge Systems. In this video, I want to talk about some of the many enhancements to working with mesh file types in SOLIDWORKS 2018. Specifically, I want to focus on the enhancements to working with graphics bodies in this video. And these are typically the types of bodies you'll be importing when you're pulling in an STL or OBJ uh, type file into SOLIDWORKS, either from a 3D scan or from some other CAD or modeling program that exports those. So when you're doing your file open in SOLIDWORKS and you're looking at these files, there's a mesh file type option to open them. And these are going to be tessellated geometry. They're not true solid geometry. So we're always a bit limited in how to work with them. Uh, when you're looking at your options, you'll have options to import them as solid or surfaces. However, uh, that only really works on really simple geometries. So most of the time you'll be bringing them in as graphics bodies. Let's take a look at a STL file from a 3D scan that we'll pull in as a graphics body here. And one of the first major things I want to point out is the orientation of the scan. Now previously, we didn't have any way to re easily reorient the graphics body in uh, SOLIDWORKS standard. Okay. There was the, and still is, the reverse engineering add-on, scanned 3D, and that provides a bunch of additional tools for working with the imported meshes and STL files. Uh, however, now in SOLIDWORKS standard, we have the ability to reorient graphics bodies. We'll see we actually have also a graphics body folder in our tree. I can go ahead and insert a move copy body feature, which will allow me to select that graphics body and reorient it however I see fit. So we can rotate, translate these bodies into a more favorable orientation. We can also section these bodies as if they were a solid. So if I'm doing the graphics only section, it needs to be enabled in the section view. I can actually create a section of this body as if it were a solid, assuming that it's a closed graphics body. Okay. Finally, we can actually create renders of these graphics bodies using PhotoView 360 within SOLIDWORKS. So I can pop open a render preview window and I'll actually be able to add appearances to this graphics body. If I open my appearance library here and I want to drag and drop an appearance onto the graphics body, we make some changes to the scene, we'll see all that reflected in our rendering preview. It's also worth noting that SOLIDWORKS Visualize natively supports working with these mesh type geometries. So you're not limited to just solid bodies in SOLIDWORKS Visualize. Okay, and when I say mesh geometry, it's worth throwing on a shaded with edges view so you can see what I'm talking about. This geometry is actually made up of thousands and thousands of tiny triangles. Okay. Tessellated geometry, which is what's common in um, 3D scanning output and also some mesh-based modeling programs. Okay. Here we can see we have a little extraneous um, piece of geometry too, you should be able to delete those extraneous graphics bodies if desired. Get down to just one graphics body here. So this is a fairly complex uh, scanned part that was brought in with a few hundred thousand faces. Um, if you wanted to convert this to a solid, basically you would be in a process of extracting profiles and lofting and basically manually remodeling this or using one of the reverse engineering tools like scan to 3D could automatically throw down surface patches on a model like this or Geomagic for SOLIDWORKS which is another add-on that can be purchased uh, that has even more enhanced automatic surfacing and solid body creation functions. Okay. But if you're really interested in the parametrics and you want to have a nice adjustable model then you're going to be sketching and lofting and rebuilding this thing. And that's one of the huge enhancements for 2018 is we now have the ability to directly tie sketch entities to the mesh. So I'm going to show this on a slightly simpler geometry here so we can get through it a little more quickly. Open up a simpler file here and um, just show that if I want to create a sketch on say the top plane here and I want to extract some of these pieces of geometry I now have the capability, say I choose a circle command, perimeter circle, I can actually hook on to 
nodes of the mesh, the underlying nodes of the mesh here, and end up with a fully defined circle. So now in SolidWorks Standard, we can directly reference these mesh type geometries, directly reference those nodes to uh, pick up and attach sketch relations. This is a huge functionality. Now, you know, again, anything I want to uh, sketch out, if I want to have a line here, I can actually anchor it to the mesh as a reference and end up with fully defined sketch entities. So that will really aid your reverse engineering efforts. And a lot of times there's maybe only a couple critical features you might be interested in. Um, then you can use that to remodel just those key features as well. Additionally, if there's actual surfaces that you want to extract rather than uh, manually going in and sketching and extruding your own features, then there's a new surface from mesh command that you'll be able to access. So I'll just hide these sketches temporarily. And if I go through my prompts for insert surface, you'll see a new surface from mesh command. This can be customized, of course, added to your command manager or shortcut toolbars. But essentially, this is going to work well for your prismatic geometries, your more simple parts like the one on the screen here, because it's limited to extracting planar surfaces, spherical, cylindrical, or conical. But it is a pretty good way to extract these. So say I choose planar surface, I can just select um, just a handful of these triangular elements from around the mesh. And basically we just need to select enough to kind of define that plane with this tolerance. Because really what it's going to do when I click calculate is it's going to search for similar elements on the graphics body. And you can see there it was actually able to extract that entire top face. So we can't really see it unless I hide the graphics body underneath. I can see I have a surface body and the graphics body. And when I toggle that one away, we can see I have the extracted surface there for reference as CAD geometry. Okay, and similarly, we could work back through the surface from mesh prompt for, say, extracting a cylindrical surface. And maybe this time, rather than um, selecting faces manually, I can use the paint select option. So this allows defining the size of a paintbrush that you want to use and basically just uh, sliding, kind of swiping that over some of the mesh elements. So when I click OK and click Calculate, it will look for that cylindrical geometry based on those elements I've selected. And then again, I have a nice cylindrical surface extracted. So you can get a feel for how it should be possible to extract out surfaces from a more simple prismatic geometry and then trim and knit these surfaces together to create an actual CAD body out of here. Now there's a completely separate workflow we're going to address in a separate video that's also new in 2018 and that's if your intended output is actually still a mesh file then we can use a new mesh modeling workflow. But these enhancements for graphics bodies will really help if you are trying to reverse engineer uh, from an imported STL or OBJ file and you're trying to turn that back into parametric solid geometry you'll appreciate the ability to anchor your sketch ent entities directly to the mesh nodes extract planar or cylindrical surfaces from the graphics body section the model as if it were a solid and also the ability to reorient that graphics body or use it in a photo rendering within photo view so those are just some of the enhancements to SOLIDWORKS 2018. Again, if you're interested in outputting a mesh file as the final product, then search for our video on mesh modeling workflow. Thanks for watching.